What is xenia? Xenia is derived from the Greek word xenos, which means stranger, guest, and host. Xenia is ultimately about how you treat your xenoi, who are people who don't come from the same household or country as you. It is about external relations and how you deal with people you don't know nor trust very well and the protocols this employs. In the Odyssey, we are told that all strangers and beggars come from Zeus. Zeus is a patron of guests and he protects them through Xenia, punishing those that disobey by thunderbolt from either himself or vicariously through Athene. In the epic, Nausicaa and Eurymaeus both mention this. Both Nausicaa and Eurymaeus complete good Xenia as well, despite their different social classes, showing how Xenia is universal and status only reflects in the gifts and entertainment they provide, but all must follow even the gods. This gives the idea that being a good host and guest is something that anyone can do in any rank of society, and this is a reciprocal relationship. The process of Xenia. As a guest, you should be able to ask for hospitality from anyone and expect to be given it. However, you're not to be a burden by overstaying your welcome or committing any other crime under your host's care. As a host, you should provide food, drink and comfort and protection in your household. You do not ask the name or business of your guest until all the previous has been provided. Both will exchange guest gifts or Xenia gifts after their stay. These are usually objects of value where people can remember who I gave them and recall them to others later on. This improves their standing as well. And it also creates a link between the guest and the host families. And this is called a Xenia bond. These bonds are very strong bonds. And an example of this is in the Iliad. Glaucus and Diomedes, a Greek and Trojan respectively, refused to fight each other as their grandfathers had a Xenia bond, even going so far to exchange their armour on the battlefield. Why do Xenia? One reason is Theoxenia. What if your guest was a god in disguise? How could you avoid punishment for bad Xenia? This was brought to awareness by the myth of Philomenon and Balchis, who were visited by Zeus in disguise, and were the only ones that were rewarded for their good Xenia, whilst the rest were punished for rejecting Zeus and for going against Xenia. Zeus also has the epithet of Zeus Exenos, patron of guests. To do bad Xenia is an act of hubris. It goes against Zeus himself, which also results in punishment. Thus, giving Xenia to every guest becomes a religious obligation to avoid punishment from Zeus. Why is Xenia important in ancient society? Xenia is important as roles could easily be reversed. Menelaus shows this in Book 4 when he rebukes his squire, saying they must return the favour or hospitality that they were given in foreign lands in regards to Telemachus. It also gives people a good reputation and pride for being hospital towards guests. This also keeps people safe and it could always be a test, even from Zeus himself. Xenia also gains importance as it forges alliances and this can act as a source of information and wealth. During ancient times, it was dangerous especially when dealing around people you don't know, with no official governing body for security, only people with absolute power and sovereignty. Nothing was there to stop dangerous acts against a person from either side. Therefore, there had to be rules, values and conventions, so people understood there was an unofficial system of good manners, behaviours and protocols which kept people safe. How is Xenia demonstrated within the Odyssey? Good Xenia is providing all the protocols for your guests, helping your guests move on in the Odyssey, whilst bad Xenia is its antithesis. Some characters in the Odyssey, like Calypso, Circe and Odysseus, showcase a mixture of good and bad Xenia. When Telemachus visits Pylos and Sparta, Nestor Menelaus show you exactly how you entertain your guests when they arrive, even when you don't know them. 
Telemachus also does this in book one, when greeting Athena in the skies, whom also comments on the ill zenia of the suitors. Nestor and Menelaus promptly invite Telemachus and his entourage in. They allow them to feast magnificently, they are offered baths before they know their names, and they exchange gifts when they leave. In response, Telemachus is charming, he answers all their questions politely, and he's a good guest in their household. Calypso and Hermes also do a good example of Xenia in Book 5, also typifying that Xenia is universal with the gods too. It also shows Calypso as being mixed, as she didn't allow Decius to move on for seven years, which is bad Xenia, but she still did good Xenia with Hermes. Even Circe shows she's mixed as well, as despite her initial introduction in Book 10 by turning the men into pigs, she still gives good Xenia and helps Odysseus to move on with her advice and provisions. Alcinous is a great example of what it means to be a good host, showcasing good Xenia in Book 7 and 8 in Phaeacia. This is shown by lavish entertainment, providing food and shelter, exchanging Xenia gifts, and helping Odysseus to his next destination. This is in contrast to how much Xenia Eumaeus can give to Odysseus, showing how Xenia is relative due to wealth. However, all must do Xenia. Also, when Odysseus cries about Troy, Alcinous distracts him with games to keep him content and comfortable, and doesn't make Odysseus compete, as it's rude to compete against your host. At the end of the Phaeacia chapters, Alcinous is upset that Nausicaa didn't do full Xenia by taking the guests to the palace herself. She even offhandedly introduced herself to Odysseus, despite not being protocol to do so in Book 6. And lastly, the loyal swineherd Eumaeus in Book 14. Despite being a slave, he provides the necessary principles of Xenia, he provides safety, food and comfort by saving Odysseus from the dogs, providing safety to host and serving him a rich meal of meat despite his poverty. Just as the Odyssey is rife with good examples of Xenia, it must also be rife with bad examples of Xenia. The worst example of Xenia in the Odyssey is in Book 9 with the Cyclops. You're meant to offer your guests food, not eat them. Even after being given a Xenia gift, despite its deceitful intent, making it the ultimate violation of Xenia due to breaking every protocol, including safety. However, this scenario is complicated, as Odysseus didn't wait for an invitation to arrive on the island or eat the Cyclops' food. Thus, it's the worst example, as they both break laws of Xenia, and it shows Odysseus as a mixture due to breaking Xenia and following it. The suitors are the most alarming and pivotal case of Bazenia in the epic. From the very start of the Odyssey, we see them breaking fundamental rules of Xenia, staying uninvited, which acts as their fundamental and primary crime. Over the course of the epic, they become exceedingly worse, as they serve themselves to food, force and barred in their service, and they saunter in every day, overstaying their welcome and being a burden psychologically and financially on their host. They also violate Xenia even more as they take, but they never give in return. In Book 18, the suitors showcase even more bad cases of Xenia, abusing their guest, even taunting their guest who is Odysseus disguised as a beggar, even the disloyal maids contribute to this. This causes Penelope to berate Telemachus for not protecting his guests in the sanctuary of Xenia. Antinous is seen worse than the suitors for trying to kill Telemachus as it breaks the Xenia bond as Odysseus saved his father's life. When Odysseus returns to the palace as a beggar, it's really unclear who is in charge of Xenia, as Telemachus hasn't quite grown up enough to impose his own authority, and Penelope doesn't have the moral authority to do so. This allows the suitors to escalate, to come to that point where death is the answer to their punishment. Why is Xenia 
significant to the epic overall. Xenia is a good indicator to who our fundamental good and bad characters are. It also shows if people are civilised or uncivilised, as Xenia follows the gods, giving characterisation in the epic. Xenia is also significant, as it gives reason for the plot, as it are the rules of Xenia that were broken by the suitors that causes a problem in the first place, which then allows the epic to give a solution. It also gives a reason for Odysseus to kill the suitors and enact his revenge. Xenia also gains significance as it relates to the importance of Xenia in an ancient Greek's everyday life due to it being the backbone of the epic. It also typifies how bad certain characters are as they won't follow moral obligation and religious obligation and rules in their society. Lastly, Xenia is significant to the epic overall as it serves as a major didactic element. It showcases good and bad models of Xenia and the consequences of these models. Those that did bad Xenia, like Polythemus, get blinded and the suitors get slaughtered. And those that did good Xenia are rewarded by nothing bad happening to them or they get their desired ending. This fits in with the function of the Odyssey in Ancient Society, which is to teach and serve as a warning, as well as to affirm that they were good and righteous people, thus giving Xenia significance in the epic. Scholarship for Xenia in the Odyssey. The first two pieces of scholarship are by Edith Hall. The first being, Xenia is important for structuring and understanding the whole poem. The second being, throughout the Odyssey, there are both good and bad examples acting as models for people to imitate or display absolutely how to not do it. The last piece of scholarship is by Richard Jenkins. People in the Odyssey are put through a moral test, the recurrent test of hospitality.